We're talking about the right that you might have to choose death if you're not happy with the quality of life. We've got lots of folks who we want to hear from. Letitia, if you don't mind standing. So what are your thoughts? Hi, I've never been in that amount of pain, and I certainly do not take away from that. And I do agree with what Montel said, but the decisions you make is between you and God and no one else. However, I do believe that life in any capacity is a gift from God. And if you only have a voice, he gave you that voice, and you're supposed to use that voice to be powerful. He gave us life. He takes our life away. And that's what I believe. Thank you very much. Dr. Judith Taylor. Dr. Taylor, how are you? I'm fine. Hi, I'm Judy, and I work for Compassion and Choices as an end-of-life consultant. We work with anybody free of charge who calls us, and we give them information and further those discussions that you notice was so important. People need to talk to their family and their loved ones about their personal choices. They need to be sure that they're making informed choices yeah. about what's right for them. And we work with people who call us from all around the country. We have an 800 number, and we are happy to talk to anybody that calls us. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, my name is Keith, and um, it seems like the group ov over here that feels like there should be ends of life rights, uh, they're talking about themselves personally, just about themselves, what life means to just themselves as a person. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not and I'm part of that group, and we're not trying to push our viewpoints on anyone else. Uh, this Not Dead Yet is one group where uh, the word used is we, we don't want it to be legal that people take their own life, and that means they're trying to impose their viewpoints on everyone. When it's, it's not legal, then nobody has the right. Uh, and, and that's the main difference. Uh, just to tell my personal story, my mom ended her life uh, oh. two and a half years ago, and um, I was aware of it in advance. She had a terminal illness, and actually the week before she passed away, I scheduled bereavement time with my company saying my mom will most probably, uh, not, will, will most probably pass away uh, next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And so in it... <laughs> Uh, in, unless, unless she decides to change her mind, but I, I was a supportive person. She was near the end of her terminal illness, and this was very personal to her. And um, actually, because she in New Jersey, you're not able to get a prescription. Uh, she did the, potentially very undignified. She uh, she had to. She got a helium tank and, and a bag to put over her head and a tube going into the bag and uh, inhaled helium until she passed out and then finally passed away. And um, this was to make sure that, uh, it, that she would pass away. This was one way that was potentially that she studied online would probably work better than some others. And because she had very little strength and didn't want anyone else helping her, she potentially couldn't get the helium tank that she was going to drag on a sheet to her rec her recliner. Uh, she potentially, if she couldn't get it on the sheet and drag it on the sheet to her recliner next to her walker, was going to lie down in the closet and and die inhaling the helium in the closet. And and we could do better than this, can't we? Can we do better for our parents? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, where's Ari? Oh, okay. Ari's from Right to Die. No, I'm National Council on Disability, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Um, hi, Ari Naman from the National Council on Disability. Um, I have two points I want to make very briefly. We've talked about this as an issue facing only those uh, with terminal illness. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, is that advocates of physician-assisted suicide have not historically stopped there. I, I want to talk about the case of Tracy Latimer, um, a 12-year-old girl with serious developmental disabilities who was murdered by her father in Toronto. And after that case, um, the Toronto representative um, uh, of Death with Dignity said that her father should not face any jail time because he had, um, in their words, already faced a 12-year sentence, the 12 years of this girl's life. Now, um, you may not know this to look at me, but... Um, I'm autistic. I have an invisible developmental disability. I went through the special education system as a child, and I still struggle today, although, the fact, although I am living a successful professional life. And, you know, this concerns me. Frankly, it terrifies me 
because if um, my family had taken the uh, perspective that these organizations are advocating for, I would not have had the opportunities that, or the opportunity for any kind of life today.